In 1915, 2,000 people boarded the Lusitania on a perilous journey from America to war-torn Europe. We cannot nursemaid every civilian ship out there. Knowing they were to travel through waters patrolled by German U-boats. Do you think the Germans really will try and get us? What followed was one of the most brutal attacks of modern warfare. No Abandoned ship. Twelve hundred people died in those freezing Atlantic waters. Innocent men, women, and children had become the targets of war. I'm Professor Ian Holborn. I was one of them. Shortly after the start of the First World War in 1914, Germany unleashed a new and deadly weapon, the U-boat. Britain had illegally blockaded German ports to starve a population into submission. Torpedo Geschwindigkeit 25. Torpedo Geschwindigkeit 25. In retaliation, German U-boat commanders were ordered to attack any British vessel they could find. Even unarmed merchant ships. Los. Oh, eins, los. Los. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. The rules of warfare were being rewritten. I was returning from a lecture tour of America when I first found out that the Lusitania might be a target for these submarines. There it was, right below the day's sailing times, an extraordinary warning from the German embassy that we might be attacked. America hadn't yet joined the war, so I assumed this was just a bluff to discourage trade with Europe. Surely. Germans wouldn't really contemplate sinking a ship full of innocent people. This was Britain's flagship liner. Not just a ship, but a huge city on the waves. Nothing competed in size and power. She looked indestructible. Mr. Vanderbilt, I understand you can't swim. Did you see the warning in the paper? What was that question? Did you see the warning in the paper? I did. Thought it was scaremongering tactics. <laughs> they think they can intimidate us that easily, then they're wrong. I don't like it, Tom. Come to talk to him. Tell him we've changed our minds. After all, we've got the children. Don't be daft. No one else is getting on. Isn't your wife worried about you going? Look, three years ago, I booked a passage on the Titanic. And something made me change my mind. I guess someone up there is looking after me. <laughs> if it was really dangerous, they wouldn't let her sail. Anyway, we'd never get our money back. 
Don't get yourself all worked up. I'm not getting worked up. I'm just feeling it might be worth asking. The fact is, madam, we have a top speed of 25 knots. No ship doing more than 14 knots has ever, ever been torpedoed. We'll get you all safely to Liverpool, I give you my word on that. And you'll be in the capable hands of one of the best ship's masters around, Captain William Turner. Oh, Captain. Can I get you to sign there, please, sir? I don't like carrying munitions, not on the passenger ship. It's only uh, rifle cartridges, shell casings, that sort of thing. All uh, part of the war effort, Captain Turner. Be careful with that. Captain, can I ask what you make of this notice in the papers? Can't believe everything you read in the newspapers, sir. As usual, we're sailing under the guidance and protection of the British Admiralty. They've looked after us very well on all our previous crossings. Now, if you'll excuse me. We've just received this from our people in New York, alongside the sailing times of the Lusitania, sir. Yes? Travellers intending to embark on the Atlantic voyage are reminded that a state of war exists between Germany and Great Britain and that Americans sailing in British ships do so at their own risk. It's signed by the Imperial German Embassy. That's a good one. Sir? They talk a good war, Windridge. Threatening something of the Lusitania's size and speed, I hardly think so. Most amusing of the Germans, not normally known for their sense of humour. Thank you, Windridge. Thank you, sir. At the time, we shared the Admiralty's confidence. Surely, as civilians travelling on a passenger ship, we were out of harm's way. Our new home was the height of modern luxury. Her four immense dining rooms handled 10,000 meals a day. There was a creche for children, a library, and even electric lifts to carry passengers between decks. The Lusitania was also fast, capable of cruising at speeds of 25 knots. The 800-foot ship was one of the quickest afloat. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Take her out. Aye, aye, sir. Starboard 15. Starboard 15, sir. Dead slow stern. All engines. Dead slow stern. Twenty, we cast off for Liverpool on our seven-day voyage. On board were nearly 2,000 souls. Of my fellow passengers, 200 were Americans and 129 were children. What we didn't know as we sailed west was that on the other side of the Atlantic, 3,500 miles away, a German submarine had also just left its home port and was heading out to new hunting grounds. The U-20 was just two years old and had been the first U-boat to navigate right round the British Isles using a school atlas. She ran on diesel only switching to electric power when she was submerged. Conditions were tough for her crew of 35. 
The air was foul with the smell of sweat and oil. Mr. Commandant in seiner Kammer. Hier rüber, hier rüber, hier. Und der Maschinenraum ist wieder klar, Herr Kleiner. Das ist geschafft. Gut. Lanz, geben Sie ihm einen Schluck. Danke, Herr Kleiner. Wie ist das für Sie, Vögel? Hast du Feinfahrt? Ich komm klar, Herr Kleiner. Schon mal im Ausland gewesen? Jawohl. Einige Mal in Holland. Ich habe da eine Tante. Dann grüßen Sie Ihre Tante mal schön von mir. Ist er denn hübsch? Eigentlich nicht, Herr Klein. Dann lassen Sie es. <lacht> Gehen. Oder halt bei Bord. Bei den Maschinen voraus große Fahrt. Auf 50 Meter gehen. Oder halt bei Bord. Wenn wir da oben sind, setzen Beide wir unsere Position voraus, ab. Große Fahrt. FT an FDU, U20, 26 Gamma, Plan Quadrat 3, Kurs 310. Sie gewöhnen sich noch dran. Einlaufen irische See. Little did the U-boat commander know that the Admiralty had intercepted his coded messages. <coughs> Intelligence like this was a godsend. It meant ships could be diverted out of harm's way, though it had to be used sparingly or the Germans would guess their codes had been broken. So, what are the eggheads telling us, Windridge? They've deciphered more U-boat signals, sir. Excellent. And? Well, so far they indicate the U-28 here, remaining in the North Sea, while the U-20 is going west about Ireland into the Irish Sea. We also decoded this earlier, came from German High Command to all U-boats. Fast steamer Lusitania expected Liverpool 7th or 8th May. She must be a target, sir. 
What do you want us to do? She's still hundreds of miles off. Nothing we can do, Wendridge, for the moment. We were still four days outside the range of any German U-boat, but the Lusitania's powerful steam turbine engines were taking us closer by the hour. Meanwhile, in first class, we were busy enjoying unrivaled luxury spread over six decks. My fellow travellers were movie stars, famous philosophers, suffragettes, entrepreneurs, and a large number of Americans, including multimillionaire playboy Alfred Vanderbilt. Oh, we must, we must play this game. Game? I like games. Oh, do you? How do we play it? Oh, you buy a ticket for a dollar, and you have to guess how many miles you're going to do in the next 24 hours, and whoever's closest wins. So what is it? A hundred miles a day or something? Oh, much more than that. I will say 500 and 12 because I have 12 racehorses. And I'll say, oh, 509 because the ninth is my birthday. Hmm. Right. Bring us some cocktails, will you? What will you have? I'll have a gin sling. No, um, a Singapore sling. Oh, and Mr. Vanderbilt has requested a tour of the bridge. What? Oh, God. Apparently, the master of the Mauritania entertained him to a cocktail party up there last time. Cocktail? <laughs> We're not a bloody nightclub. I've told him no, sir. Cunard regrets. Special wartime restrictions are in place. Sounded very convincing, if I say so myself. Good. How's she handling, Johnston? Carrying two degrees of port bow to my tank course, sir. Weather's closing in, sir. Yes, I think you might be right there. What course shall we be taking, sir, when we get to the war zone? What business is that of yours, Johnson? None, sir. In wartime, navigational orders are confidential to myself and Captain Anderson. Understood? Sir. Carry on, Anderson. Excuse me, is this cheer free? Yeah. Seasick? Bad luck. Where have your parents got to? My mother's in America. And my daddy is dead. I'm sorry. Grown ups always say that. Yeah, well, grown ups have very little imagination. So who's looking after you? My nurse, Hilda. Hat. It's a Scottish hat. I live in Scotland, on an island. All by yourself? <laughs> no. My wife and our three boys. And there's some other folk live there too. I know a very good cure for seasickness. Exploring. How about a tour of the ship? Yes, please. Professor Holborn, on your service. Miss Avis Dolphin. Huh. Like the fish? It's not a fish, it's an animal. Come. So, we've just heard a small merchant ship's been sunk just off the south coast of Ireland. Looks like New 20 started at work. Right, we must alert all warships in the area. Sir. We troopship Orion due out of Devonport tonight, haven't we? Yes, sir. Heading north. Well, let's hold her in port until further notice. Yes, sir. And it's a Miss Gloucester's on her way from the Medbacks to Liverpool. Get a message sent to her urgently. She's to maintain at least 20 knots in zigzag. Yes, sir. 
The ship went down here and was last sighted at 14.30 today near Queenstown. So you 20s position must be somewhere near here. The Lusitania's also headed that way. Maybe we could reroute her out of harm's way north about Ireland. That would add an extra day or so onto her passage. I don't think we need to impose such a great inconvenience on the many hundreds of passengers, Windridge. Yes, sir. It was as if the crew shared the Admiralty's calm confidence that no harm would befall us. They showed little enthusiasm or competence during the infrequent lifeboat drills. I know what you're going to say. But our best men have been taken by the Navy. Till then, we need to go on drilling this lot until they at least look like they know what they're doing. The U-20 was having little success. She'd only sunk a small fishing boat. Now she was low on fuel and supplies and desperately hunting for a few trophies before her return to Germany. den ganzen Weg hierher, um so ein paar Nussschalen zu versenken. Und die Tommys wissen jetzt, wo wir stehen. Das macht es nicht einfacher. Ich geh jetzt mit dem Treibstoff. Schiff voraus! Großer Dampfer! Entfernung 2000 Meter! Hallo! 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 Na endlich! Klar bei Entlüftung! Klar bei Entlüftungen! Auf Batteriebetrieb umschalten. Vorne oben ziehen. Beide oben ziehen. Boot durchpendeln. Wo eins klar machen. Wo eins klar machen. Wo eins klar machen. Wo eins klar machen. Los, los, los! Tiefer halten, Lanz! Hinten oben fünf. Hinten oben fünf. Da ist er. Ohne Geleitschutz. Ganz. Keine Erkennungszeichen. Sieht aus wie ein englischer Versorger. Circa 6000 Tonnen. Gegnerfahrt 15. Also? Ran, Männer. Gegnerpeilung 60. Beide Maschinen voraus, große Fahrt. Beide Maschinen voraus, große Fahrt. Torpedogeschwindigkeit 30. Torpedogeschwindigkeit 30. Entfernung 600. Entfernung 600. Torpedogeschwindigkeit 30. Entfernung 600. Und rein damit, Jungs! Wo 1 ist klar! Torpedo, wo 1 ist klar. Da hat uns gesehen. Eins. Los! Wo oh, eins? Los! Und los! Torpedo! Fünge! Fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn, elf, zwölf, dreizehn. Thanks very much. South of Conningberg Lighthouse. Treffer. Ja! Hey, lass mich auch mal ran. Do you think the Germans really will try and get us? 
No, no, I just believe in being prepared, that's all. Prepare for the worst, and you can expect the best. And when we get to Liverpool, Miss Dolphin, where will you be going then? To school. Mother says it'll make a lady of me. We got it from the steward. We got it from one of the smokers in the boiler room. We carry loads of it. They wouldn't put that on a ship carrying children, surely? Well, they would, and they have. The cargo holds full of it. Shells, bullets, all kinds of stuff. Oh, I'll be glad when this is over and we get to Liverpool. It's all right. This one's not been happy. We won't settle unless she's in my arms. Those two are so excited they've hardly slept. Peggy, Tom, Lou, she's going out for a smoke in a room with the lads. I'll see you in the dinner, Holly. Dorothy, look at this. Only 462 miles. That's darn slow. Is he? Thank you. Come. Thank you, sir. The U-20 sunk another boat off the Irish coast, sir. We've cleared all our ships out of the area, haven't we? Yes, sir. But there's still the Lusitania, sir. Due in on that route first thing tomorrow. Should we send a destroyer escort, sir? Windridge, close the door. We cannot nursemaid every civilian ship out there. The Navy simply hasn't the resources. We've half the fleet in the Mediterranean trying to win the war. Just issue the standard U-boat warning to all shipping in the area. Yes, sir. Wie schlecht für heute? Und jetzt? Wir brauchen zwei Torpedos als Reserve für den Rückenmarsch. Wir könnten kurz auf Liverpool nehmen oder hier an der Küste weiterlaufen Richtung Westen. Und Empfangskomitee für die Lusitania spielen. Sie müsste morgen hier sein. Passagierdampfer. Was glauben Sie im Ernst, dass sie nur Passagiere an Bord hat? Im britischen Flottenregister wird sie als bewaffneter Hilfskreuzer geführt. Ja. Wir haben Befehl, jedes feindliche Schiff zu versenken. Mit einem Torpedo werden wir keinen großen Schaden anrichten. Aber wir könnten hier kräftig einen verpassen. Wenn wir sie erwischen. The Admiralty's standard U-boat warning was nothing new. It was sent out nearly every night. Of course, we knew nothing of how our fate was being decided. We were more preoccupied with that regular feature of transatlantic crossings, the passenger talent contest. Can you juggle, Professor? No, I'm afraid I can't. You if you like. I taught my nurse, Hilda. Where is your nurse tonight? There's a dance tonight below. She's gone with one of the sailors. Oh. Right. She says it's not much to look at, but he's a good kisser. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Marvelous stuff. Marvelous. Next, we are incredibly lucky to welcome straight from Broadway the lovely Miss Dorothy Taylor. As a child, I went wild when the band played. How I ran to the man when his hand swayed. Clarinets were my pets, and 
and a slight trombone I thought was simply divine. Evening, sir. A signal from the Admiralty. Avoid headlands, steer mid-channel course, submarines off Irish coast. Is that it? That's all, sir. Well then, gentlemen, we just had a U-boat warning from the Admiralty. They're far off, but we'd better take precautions. Price. What's up? Double the lookout, darken the ship, prepare the lifeboat. No, yes, sir. I'll inform the passengers. So you can keep your figure and your bow. Give me a P I A N O O O. I love to stop right beside an upright or a high tone baby gray. We are truly honoured to witness a performance of such calibre. Ah, Captain Turner. Ladies and gentlemen, I shan't be singing a song. We've had a warning from the British Admiralty that German submarines have been reported off the coast of Ireland. However, there's no cause for alarm. On entering the war zone tomorrow morning, we shall be securely in the care of the Royal Navy. I would only ask you to take the precaution of keeping curtains drawn in your cabins tonight and ask gentlemen not to light their cigarettes on deck. Otherwise, please continue to enjoy the entertainment. Thank you. Get up to the bridge as soon as you finish here. Are they sending us an escort? No word yet. Captain. <clears throat> Sir? Well, I see by the ship's bulletin that we're not reaching top speed, and I'd like to know why that is. It's because we've only three out of four boiler rooms operational on this crossing, sir. But that's a disgrace. We were told no U-boat could catch the ship, and now you're slowing us down. You know, the chairman of Cunard is an old friend of mine, and I'm sure he too would like to know what exactly you're up to. He knows perfectly well what I'm up to. He issued the instructions to conserve coal supplies himself, part of the company's war effort. Oh. <laughs> but we're only down from 24 to 21 knots, sir. And new boats can barely make 12 knots with a following sea. Good night. This is madness, Alice. We'll be freezing up there. We'll be warm enough with the blankets. I am not spending the night deep down in our cabin with submarines around. I want to be on top where I can see what's happening. A nice and near lifeboat, thank you very much. Fog. It's the last thing we need. Still, it's the last thing they need, too. In the sub. They'll be waiting for first light, I reckon. It's not so bad, actually. Yeah. Reminds me of when we were courting. That seems like a lifetime ago. We were just kids, weren't we? Yeah. One of us still is. <laughs> Good night, Professor. Night, night.
Was ist mit Ihnen los? Wir haben heute zwei Schiffe versenkt. Ja, zwei zivile Handelsschiffe. Jetzt hören Sie mir mal zu. Meine Familie in Hamburg hat bald nichts mehr zu essen wegen der britischen Blockade. Das sind auch Zivilisten. Denken Sie mal darüber nach, Vögele. Jawohl. faster when we can't see our own hands in front of our faces. Inform the engine room. I want a full head of steam. We may need full speed at a moment's notice. Aye, aye, sir. Reducing speed of the fog. Any more from the Admiralty? Yeah, nothing. But with any luck, this will burn off in an hour or two. Thank you. And get our bearings and begin to pick up some speed. Yes, until then, let's go steam in the head into God knows what. Yes, indeed, sir. Uh, of course, I understand. Uh, may I ask you to hold for a moment, please, sir? Thank you. It's the chairman of Cunard, sir. What? He's heard about the torpedoed ships. Want to know what we're going to do to protect the Lusitania. Cunard chairman? I don't telephone him every morning to check he's doing his job. Thank you so much for waiting, sir. Won't be much longer. All right, tell him we'll issue a special warning direct to her captain. Sir, so we're going to issue a special warning. Almost 24 hours had passed since the last U-20 attack, and only now was that information being relayed to the Lusitania. What's that brow head? I thought we'd have passed that already. Hard to tell. Still, at least it's clearing up a bit. Price? Sir? Take it back up to 18 knots. 18 knots, sir. At last. Submarines active in southern part Irish Channel. Last heard of 20 miles south of Cunningbeg Lightship. What does that mean? Last heard of. When? Last week, last night, an hour ago. Oh, they play huh? God knows. I must get a fix in our position in case the weather comes in again. Then, if you get any decent information, I can act on it. I'll bring her in closer. See if that is Browhead. Johnston? Sir. Starboard 10? Starboard 10, sir. With the fog lifting, and the sight of the Irish coast, our spirits rose. Did you see them cliffs, George? Happy Island. Not long now. One of us should really go down and pack. I'll go. Joe can help me. Come on, let's go. Be all right. Alles ruhig. Hier ist nichts zu holen. Setzen uns ab. Moment. Da ist was. Westlich. Ich hab's. Ist das. Was muss sie sein? Lusitania. Mein Gott. Also gut, versuchen wir es. Wir greifen an! Auf Gefechtsstation! Auf Gefechtsstation! Vorne Mitte. Vorne Mitte. Hinten Mitte. Mitte. 
Vorne oben fünf. Vorne oben fünf. Komm auf. Komm auf. Beide Mitte. Beide Mitte. Boot einsteuern auf Seerohrtiefe. Boot einsteuern auf Seerohrtiefe. Boot einsteuern auf Seerohrtiefe. Wie so langsam. Meinst du? Wirklich verdammt langsam für die Lusitania. Lusitania? Schütze 18 Knoten. Ist die Lusitania? Ja. Herzog? Professor? Good morning, young lady. You're packed and ready to go ashore? Look. That is Ireland. We're almost there, Avis. I'll soon see my boys again. What is it? Will you come and visit me at my school? I'll tell you what. Even better. You can come and visit us. Climb the hills, and my boys will take you out in our boat, and you can catch crabs for your supper. Do you promise? Really promise? Cross my heart. Hope to die. Come on, let's have some lunch. Unmöglich. Es geht nicht. Sie ist zu weit weg. Bei der Peilung kriegen wir sie nie und nimmer. Sir, headland to port, sir. Two points above the bow. Looks like old head of Kinsale. Indeed. Excellent. I want a four-point fix on the lighthouse, please, Mr. Bestie. Sir. Steer south, 87 east. Sir. South, 87 east. South, 87 east, sir. Sie den Kurs. Sie läuft direkt auf uns zu. Oh, eins klar machen zum Unterwasserschuss. Rohr 1 klar machen zum Unterwasserschuss. Torpedo, Rohr 1 klar machen! Geschwindigkeit 30. Entfernung 800. Vögele. Torpedogeschwindigkeit 30, Entfernung 800. Time for me to take a stroll around the deck. Aren't you finishing your pudding? No, too sweet for me. I'll set up the deck quite, shall I? I won't be long. Excuse me. Wines is clear! Wines is clear zum Unterwasserschuss. Wines bewässern. Mündungsklappe öffnen. Rohr 1 bewässern, Mündungsklappe öffnen. Rohr 1 bewässern, Mündungsklappe öffnen! Rohr 1 bewässern, Mündungsklappe öffnen! Und? Rohr 1 ist bewässert, Mündungsklappe ist auf. Also gut. Eins fertig zum Schuss. Frau oh, eins. Los! Hey, 
Ich kann nicht, das sind Frauen und Kinder auf dem Ort. Komm, ich flug von da nochmal! Ich kann nicht! Los! Und los! Rede läuft. Eins. Zwei. Drei. Torpedo closing on the starboard now! Without steam pressure from the boilers, neither the steering gear nor the watertight doors would operate. Hoist the not in command signal. Aye, sir. Go to the engine room, find out what the problem is, see what can be done. Aye, sir. Engines are out of commission. Sir, seven degree list to starboard, sir. At this rate, we won't make it to port. Lower the lifeboats to the rail, Anderson, but don't launch until we slow. Yes, sir. Good luck. Very, very tightly and not let go, right? Right. As the power went out all over the ship, the new electric elevators had become death traps. Sir, send an SOS. Come at once. Listing to the south of Oaken Sail.
Sinkt verdammt schnell. Mit einem Torpedo. Das ist unglaublich. It's gone. And boiler rooms one, two, and three are flooded. I can get no further for inspection, sir. Her speed is forcing water into the hull. She's filling fast, sir. Nothing can be done to slow us so we can get the lifeboats down here. Nothing, sir. This is 40 degrees starboard, sir. This is 20 degrees, sir. Gentlemen, abandon ship. Johnston, get out, save yourself. 
Go on, tell Anderson we slowed enough to lower the boat. Sir? That's an order.
was. Achtzehn Minuten. Rettungsschiffe werden bald hier sein. Kriegsschiffe auch. Ja. Wir gehen auf Heimatkurs. Heimatkurs. Some held on to life for four hours before being rescued. But for most, the bitterly cold Atlantic proved too much. Sir. Windridge, what the hell do you want? Lusitania has been sunk, sir. 2.30 p.m. today, eight miles off the Irish coast. Sunk? Torpedo, sir. She went down in less than 20 minutes. Impossible. Coast Guard saw her from the shore. Rescue operation is underway, but casualties are expected to be high. Excuse me, gentlemen. Windridge. Yes, We also intercepted this from U-20 to base, saying she did the job with just one torpedo. One torpedo? Yes, sir. And she sank in 20 minutes. How a damnation! Her cargo must have exploded. This must not get out, understood? In fact, I want every U-boat message we've intercepted in the last week in my office under lock and key within the hour. Yes, sir. Mary, I need to get a message to Mr. Churchill at once. All that evening, a ghastly procession of rescue ships brought the living and the dead ashore. Over 1,200 people had perished. Just 35 out of 129 children had survived, and only 4 out of 39 babies. his father. Among the survivors was Captain Turner. He had miraculously been pulled unconscious from the water.
Well, Holmes, grave news indeed. Indeed, sir. Prime Minister wants an inquiry. Questions in the house and abroad. Did we do enough to protect her? Could we have done more? Naturally, it is of the very first importance that no blame or negligence is attached to the Admiralty. We welcome an inquiry. We have nothing to hide. I hope not, Hobbs. Our navigational orders to the captain were full and precise. Sadly, he seems to have chosen not to obey them. Mm -hmm. I've been studying his course. Whether he acted out of sheer incompetence or because he's been got at by the Germans, we don't yet know. Well, let us find out. He must be pursued without check. We are compiling a full report on him. Very good. Now, there is one other matter pertaining to this affair. The German government is seeking to justify the attack by claiming that the ship was carrying armaments and that these must have exploded in the hold. Why else, they ask, would such a large ship have sunk so quickly, having been struck by only one torpedo? Well, plenty of survivors think they saw more than one torpedo. Funny how the memory plays tricks. And we can see to it that they are the ones called to give evidence at the inquiry. Mm. Of course, with the ship at the bottom of the ocean, it's impossible to prove absolutely either way. Funk telegram from FD Worker Line. Thank you. Glückwunsch an Kommandant und Besatzung zur erfolgreichen Feindfahrt. Bericht des Kommandanten an Oberkommando nach Rückkehr erbeten. Sie werden ein Held sein in Berlin. Mit Orden überhäuft und Champagner trinken mit seiner Majestät. Can you manage this? Anyone here by the name of Hoburn? Here? to die, are you? Wouldn't dream of it. Good. I had lemonade and biscuits for breakfast. <laughs> and I saved one for you. Davis and I were among the lucky ones. Less than 300 bodies were ever found. The rest lost at sea.
Worldwide reaction to the sinking was unanimous in its condemnation of Germany. Rioters destroyed German-owned shops in British cities. The New York Times devoted an entire edition to the disaster, featuring photographs of the mass graves. Our own personal tragedies were quickly turned into wartime propaganda, and Germany was struck off the list of civilized nations. Captain? Ah, Captain Lord and Schwieger. Have you a Kriegstagebuch in your persönlichen Aufzeichnung dabei? Here, bitte. Ihr Treffen mit dem Admiral ist abgesagt worden. Wie das? Sie kehren umgehend an Ihren Stützpunkt zurück. Wir haben einen persönlich unterschriebenen Befehl. Die Lage hat sich geändert. Inwiefern? Es besteht keinerlei Grund für irgendwelche Ehrungen. Sie können froh sein, wenn Sie nicht degradiert werden. Die Weltpresse ist über uns sehr gefallen. Seine Majestät, der Kaiser selbst, ist als Mörder, als Barbar bezeichnet worden. Und das alles wegen Ihrer Eigenmächtigkeit. Meine Eigenmächtigkeit? Ich habe Befehle ausgeführt. Sie hatten keinerlei Befehl, die Lusitania zu versenken. Sie wissen sehr gut, dass dieses Schiff für jeden deutschen U-Boot-Kommandanten ein Ziel war. Ich weiß nur, dass Sie Ihre Befehle auf eine höchst eigenwillige Art und Weise interpretieren. Amerika könnte jetzt zu England und seinen Alliierten stoßen. Und das wäre für Deutschland eine Katastrophe. Und das haben wir Ihnen zu verdanken. The Germans had found their scapegoat. Now the British Admiralty had to make sure its own house was in order. Can you tell us who's late for the sinking of your ship? Why didn't you go down on your ship? Sir, sir. Like hundreds of others dead. Awkward questions might just undo the propaganda victory they had so roundly won. I think that those of us who survived have, well, almost a duty to those that didn't to find out why we were left so open to attack. Especially when we were given assurances right at the outset that we would be under the protection of the British Admiralty. The judicial inquiry was held just a month after the sinking. Captain Turner arrived, unaware of the trap that had been set. Better give us some bloody answers. All right. I declare this investigation into the sinking of the Lusitania open. All set. Mr. Carson. Uh, my Lord, this isn't an ordinary case for inquiry, where we must determine the cause of the accident, for that is known. In this inquiry, the questions are with regard to the conduct of the captain. Whether or not, he navigated his ship in accordance with his strict instructions, and thus whether or not he could have done more to save the 1,198 lives that were lost that day. Captain Holmes, you have, I believe, prepared the Admiral's evidence. Indeed, sir, and I shall, if I may, remain in court in case I can be of any assistance in clarifying matters. My Lord, Without further ado, I call Captain Turner to the stand. Captain Turner, you were given strict instructions to steer a mid-channel course, were you not? Yes, but first I had to find... And yet, when the torpedo hit, you were just a few miles from shore. We'd come in close because I needed a bearing on our position. You disobeyed orders. Uh, there'd been a fog earlier. I needed... You willfully disobeyed your strict orders from the Admiralty. In doing so, Captain Turner, you were inviting disaster. Were you not? 
The Admiralty's broadside was relentless. Our traumatised captain was questioned about instructions he couldn't remember, because in truth, he had never been sent them. Hot day for you, sir. But you stuck to your guns. I'm beginning to think it doesn't matter much what I say. Seems like they've already made up their minds. Sir, that officer from the Admiralty who interviewed me... What about him? He told me it would help the inquiry if I told them I'd seen at least two torpedoes. Even three. The more the merrier, he said. They're not interested in the truth. This is what happens in war. Everybody gets their hands very dirty, very quickly. Lord Mersey, might I ask what impression the captain made on you today? My impression is a perfectly straight and honest man. No shred of evidence to suggest that he's in the pay of the Germans. I think the Admiralty has been quite improper to suggest it. Are you minded then to judge the man simply incompetent? Captain Holmes, you made it very clear to me what the Admiralty wishes the findings of this independent inquiry to be. However, my duty is to see that the truth prevails. And to me, he seems to have been a very good captain. But... In wartime, my lord, there are things more important than the truth. In wartime, my lord, the survival of the nation as a whole becomes paramount. Any hint of discredit to the Admiralty could lose us important friends among the neutral countries. Do you understand? Are you suggesting that I declare an innocent man guilty? I'm suggesting, my lord, that you find a way to conclude this inquiry without damaging our chances of winning the war. The conclusions of this inquiry are as follows. That the Admiralty diligently and fully advised the captain of the Lusitania of the route best calculated to avert peril. And that Captain Turner was a competent man who did his best in difficult and perilous circumstances. The Commission therefore finds that the loss of the Lusitania was due solely to the damage caused by two, possibly three, torpedoes fired by one or more submarines of German nationality. It was a deliberate attempt to murder the passengers on board. And the entire blame for this cruel destruction of life must rest with them. It all had the feeling of a charade being played out for the press, with the real questions left unanswered. Why didn't the Admiralty do more to protect the Lusitania? We'll never know. The Admiralty did an excellent job of covering its tracks. Many years later, Churchill wrote, In spite of all its horror, 
We must regard the sinking of the Lusitania as an event most important and favorable to the Allies. Although two years were to pass before the United States declared war on Germany, the poor babies who perished in the ocean struck a blow at German power more deadly than could have been achieved by the sacrifice of a hundred thousand fighting men. On that day, the idea of a good, clean war with a code of honor that protected civilians vanished forever. The gloves came off and a new age of total warfare began. I used to think a government was there to protect its people, but of course, it's there to protect itself. Avis! 